Hi all, I have one of the more outrageous gambits to show you today. In fact, this is probably the most outrageous and worst gambit I've ever shown you in the history of the channel. It's called the Jerome Gambit, but there is some method in the madness. It has to be uh, said, in my view. So the Jerome Gambit was named after Alonzo Wheeler Jerome. Uh, he uh, basically, uh, he was born in 1834, died 1902. According to ChessGames.com, he was from Paxton, Illinois, and he's credited with inventing the Jerome Gambit. So he played this variation over the board and correspondence play, and also he discussed it in the pages of the Dubuc Chess Journal, 1874 to 1875, and the American Chess Journal. Jerome was a US Civil War veteran and a hemp farmer. He is the author of The Great Debate, a book about the debates between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas. So uh, basically, it's, it's a very, very fascinating gambit. And I think also great loyalty and credit has to be given to a blogger, a dedicated blog for the drone gambit, which has been going since 2008. And in fact, the person behind it has been researching it from 2001, Rick Kennedy. So he's to be saluted. <laughs> Rick saluted. 2001, Rick has been researching this. So I think that shows great foreignness, enthusiasm and perseverance. And he's created a new wave of interest in this gambit. I think it has got a killer application for those that are, you know, want to do fun stuff on streaming, YouTube, a fun game challenge. It's a very, very unsound gambit. If you can win with it, that's amazing. It shows your amazing tactical resourcefulness. So I'm going to give it a go in bullet chess at least. And they say, if you smile, the world smiles with you. Well, maybe the same can be said for enthusiasm and persistence. So this blogger, Rick uh, Kennedy, I think you've made some of us very enthusiastic to try it now through your immense long term perseverance and interest and enthusiasm and documentation on the blog. So congratulations for that. You've caught my interest today. Uh, so also, I've been reading an interesting book recently, a classic book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's very, very interesting. And actually, it does remind me of something in, in one of the, the first core principles about having your own proactivity, uh, not to be just always reactive. And in that respect, you could say that it's a really, really unsound gambit, but it exercises your strategic choice. Are you going to be technologically determined by what engines think, you know, are sound openings? Uh, or do you just, you want, you want to have that choice, especially on the fast time limits where there's not much stakes. I don't really see the harm of your strategic choice if you want to have some fun and a fantastic challenge. Try and, you know, I, I would say that there's some value to having your own strategic choice to, to play something deliberately, which you know is completely unsound. And I'm not going to say otherwise in the evidence here. I'm going to show you uh, a classic game from the author himself first, and then the Blackburn game. And you won't be impressed at all. <laughs> it, but if you if you do want to do challenges, you know, if you're streaming challenges or YouTube games with live commentary and you manage to win, you know, congratulations and you've also exercised your free will because we're in this world where sometimes the computer says no and we all run along with that so in a way by choosing a deliberately unsound opening system you're exercising your strategic choice you're not being strategically uh, you're not being pardon me technologically determined by what computers dictate to us or what the super grandmaster dictate to us should be played. But remember, they only play very, very ultra solid openings because they're in those closed all play all tournaments. A lot of people really forget that. When we play our chess online, it is a lot of time, you know, for fun at faster time limits, no stakes, really, just for fun entertainment. 
So maintaining that strategic choice. So here's the evidence I'm going to show why it's such a disastrous gambit. So E4. Okay, this is from Alonso in a game 1874, a correspondence game of his. So William Schenkman, William A. Schenkman plays E5. We have knight F3, knight C6, bishop C4, bishop C5. So, so far, this is uh, Gioco Piano territory, isn't it? Of the bishop C5. But White plays the unexpected move, uh, bishop takes F7 giving up the light square bishop. It does remove black's castling rights. So king takes f7. And now, to make this even more outrageous, a second piece sacrifice, which is a bit like the Halloween Gambit, which I do enjoy playing in turnstile chess myself. I, I do love the Halloween Gambit. It's, it gives a sometimes dangerous central pawns. But I'm not so sure about this bishop sack <laughs> as a prelude. So we have here... A situation which is two pieces down. As I say, I think the killer application for this, in all seriousness, <laughs> are, are, the, are the challenges you might have. So you're streaming and, and sometimes there's these, these challenges thrown down for you, like to play blindfold or something, to play something unsound. I think this is this has got the killer application for that. You're two pieces down here. And all you've done is disturb Black's castling rights. Now Alonso in this game played check, and we have king e6. So Black was not afraid of centralizing the king even. In fact, on king f8, that's plausible as well, just giving up the knight and then protecting the bishop. And Black has a big advantage, as you might expect. So we have in this game king e6, check. There's a bit of excitement there for that check. And on f4, so there's there is a bit of pawn mobility. But unfortunately, black threw a cold shower on this whole concept with queen f6, just volunteering to give a piece back. After f takes, queen takes. White really doesn't have much of an attack here. And queen f3 was played. We have knight f6. And that threatens even to take the queens off the board. So d3 protects e4 now. The king retreated back. Knight c3. And now g5 was played. We have rook f1, c6, g3. And now black played very energetically here with d5. We have bishop d2, bishop g4, a powerful forcing move. Queen g2, rook hf8, h3. And now knight takes e4. Yeah, black is playing in a very violent fashion here, unfortunately for white. We have bishop f4 being played. If D takes e4, rook takes f1, king takes f1, check. This position is just clearly better for black as well, even though black is trying to give back all the pieces. It's still a really dominating position with a huge advantage for black. So uh, we have here bishop f4 being played. And now g takes, g takes, rook takes f4, and now knight takes e4. Black takes on f1, king takes, and now rook f8 check. And this is just terrible. White resigned here. Uh, you know, it's it's a really crushing position, as you might expect. Uh, so say, you know, king e1 takes, or even bishop f3 is more accurate, in fact. It's completely crushing, yes. So, <laughs> with that great advert, there's also another fantastic advert to show you, which is even more horrific, actually. After Queen H5 check, uh, Blackburn was playing, as in the Black Death, this great British player had this played against him. And he, he casually played G6. And he went into a counter gambit mode after Queen takes. He actually offered his rook with D6. Queen takes, and now Queen H4. Now, white here uh, played uh, d4, and we have bishop b6. No, no, white didn't play d4 there. White castled, pardon me. <laughs> we have uh, knight f6, and now c3. 
And here White went wrong actually uh, because actually Blackburn has played a little bit on uh with his rook sack. White could have played here technically Queen d8. It holds up a nice pin actually against the knight. Uh, so for example Bishop b6 e5 and now Queen d3. This is the key key point. And White's actually technically better. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so. But unfortunately, White played c3, and now Blackburn played knight g4, a very powerful forcing move, threatening checkmate. We have h3, and now Bishop takes f2 check, king h1. And now, can you see what Blackburn played? If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, a really, really crushing tactical combination here. Actually, a thousand points, 10,000 points, in fact. Black to play here for this remarkable combination that exists here. So black to play, what would you play with the black pieces? 10 seconds to pause the video. Okay. Bishop f5, yeah, it hits, hits the queen. Pretty powerful forcing move. The rook uh, was taken, but now can you see what the point is? The key point here. Okay. I hope you saw that as part of that guess the move. Queen takes h3 check, it's crushing. G takes, bishop takes e4 is checkmate. So that is really horrific. So there are downsides of playing this gambit. It's it's arguably uh, the, the worst and most outrageous uh, chess gambit going. But I think it really does have a killer application uh, for streamer challenges and for exercising free will. Because we don't really want to let computers dictate our openings because I think that explains why, you know, for example, the King's Engine defense and the modern Bonodi, they're not played much. Is it just because the Super Grandmasters are not playing those openings? Are we really going to be dictated by chess engines or what Super Grandmasters play in closed all play all tournaments? I think we need to exercise sometimes our strategic choice, not always be the victim sometimes of technological determinism. Yes. I did a little bit of social science. I think I know what I'm talking about. You want to have that strategic choice sometimes, not to have uh, the technology dictating or, the, or even the super grandmasters dictating because we have our own needs online for entertainment and fun. So that's worth remembering. So, and if you do manage to win with it, let's, let's encourage that official blog. I'll give that official blog link in the description. It's been going, as I say, for years and years, this blog. It's really a testimony also to perseverance, enthusiasm, determination, to document any interesting wins that could come out of it, any interesting ideas and games. Okay. Comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much.